I thank you that you're more than enough. That you're here to meet every need. You're here for your people, Father, to show yourself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are right towards you. Praise the Lord. I have a word this morning, but before I do that, it's Children's Church Day and service, and if you have children that need to be released, you can release them now. In Lamentations 3.22, it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Say never. Never. Never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Say every morning. morning. Means this morning. Every morning means this morning. Amen. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. And the implication is to you. Great is your in, great is your faithfulness to me. Thank you, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. I don't think the psalmist can say that enough. How great Woo. is his mercy towards us this morning. Glory, and then another glory. scripture, Isaiah 43. You can says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Even now it springs forth. Even now. That word, new things, is the same word in a new day. New every morning. So today, as we get prepared for our speaker today, we got to recognize God's doing something in us that's never been done before. Something He's planned in us before the foundation of the world. There's more in you than you realize. There's more in you because it's God Almighty. Yes. It's God Almighty. So you ought to be excited. When you come to church, you should come for something. And today we have a special speaker, one that we know but we can't take for granted because there's a mantle that rests on him unlike many others. It's a mantle as an evangelist, and it's a mantle to teach evangelism. For us today, we need to receive what God is saying. Not just a good word, but a word for us, how we can transform our situations. So this morning, I have the distinct privilege of uh, introducing Emery Beal with a mantle of evangelism, with with a word that's always fresh, it's always new, it's always current, and it's always what God has. And I honor him today, and I ask that a little bit of him might rub off on me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Right, come on, somebody. Let's bless God today. If you love Jesus, let's bless God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Right, come on, saints. He's awesome. There is none like him. We honor you, God. We bless your holy name, Jesus. You're awesome, God. You're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor and all glory, Lord. We magnify you, God. We lift you up, Lord. Your majesty is amazing, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You may take your seats. Amen. Let's bless God for our worship team. A powerful worship. Amen. Amen. I never heard that one song. It was powerful. He won't. I don't. That was powerful. Praise God. If I could sing, I would sing it, but I don't want to mess y'all up. Praise God. I honor, uh, honor God. This is it's an honor. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to minister to you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. This is the greatest job someone could have to share Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And he's commissioned all of us to do that. I honor Pastor Phil and Pastor Ruby in their absence. Let's bless God for them. Amen. I honor all of our our ministers and leaders and workers, all the saints of God, all the visitors. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. You are all very important to God. I honor my my beautiful, anointed, smart, intelligent, fine wife. Amen. Let's bless God for her. 
Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop right there before I get in trouble. All right, if you have your Bibles, can you uh, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. Can we signify by standing? If you can stand, can we please stand for the reading of the word? Let's honor God. Amen. 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 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there. From small to great, they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their, son, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jerolitis, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Then David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, please bring me the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue? For you shall surely overtake them, and without fear, without fail, recover all. Now turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 24. If you have it, say amen. Don't have it say wait. Amen. Praise God. Most of the time preachers just turn to it and start reading. I want everybody to get it. Amen. From the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day and a, a night and a day I had been in, de in the deep, in journeys often, in pearls of water, in pearls of robbers, in pearls of my own countrymen, in pearls of the Gentiles, in pearls in the city, in pearls in the wilderness, in pearls in the sea, in pearls among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold nakedness, besides other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Our last scripture, Philippians 4. Philippians 4, verse 11. Now that I speak in regard to need, not that I speak in regard to need. For I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us pray. Father, we bless you, Lord. We honor you today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you reveal your glory, Lord. We thank you for your presence that's here, Lord God. I pray today, Lord, that you turn on lights and break chains, oh God. I pray, Father, that you give me the tongue of the learned, that I may know how to speak a word in season to those that are weary. Father, I came to know nothing among them save Jesus Christ, and I'm crucified. For my speech and my preaching are not with intelligent words of human wisdom, but the demonstration of the Spirit 
and power. I bind anything that's not like God, any fear, every worry, every sickness, disease, infirmity, any religion. I bind it and take authority over it now. Lord, I lose your peace, your power, your love, your authority, your anointing, your healing, and your deliverance. Have your way this day, Holy Spirit. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may take your seats. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to recover all. Well, that was nice, but, but say it like you mean it. Look at your other neighbor and say, it's time to recover all. Amen. This is one of my favorite, favorite stories in the Bible. Um, here it was. David was on the run from Saul. We know that David uh, slew Goliath, and David was a mighty warrior. But what happened is that the ladies start saying uh, Saul killed his thousands, and David killed his ten thousand. So Saul got mad. He got jealous of David. So David was on the run. And, and David got... Um, 400 men with them. These men were the, the thugs of society. They were the men who were in debt or the men that society, society rejected. So David had this, this band of, of outcasts with him. And David, David was, was a gangster. I submit to you, David, David was a bad man. David would go from town to town. He would kill everybody. He would take the sheep, the goats, the clothes, the silk, the linen, the jury, amen. But in all this, Saul was still, Saul was still chasing him. And one time, Saul pinned David up in a stronghold, and Saul didn't know it, but David cut off his robe. But he said, I will not touch God's anointed. Amen. And I told you this before, as preachers, we use that, you know, don't, don't say anything against us. But if you look at it, he said, touch not mine anointed. That's everyone who's saved. You're God's anointed. And then the prophets, he said, do my prophets no harm. That represents the priesthood. So we shouldn't be touching not only the leaders, we shouldn't be touching each other either. Amen? Stay with me. So now, he would not come against Saul, but Saul was trying, Saul uh, repented, he apologized, but he was still coming after David. So what David did is he went to the, the Philistines, and he said, look, Saul's trying to kill me, I'm defacting to you. I'm on your side. Just let me stay with you. I won't bother you. So they gave him Ziglag. But David was kind of like an like a undercover agent. Amen. What David was doing, he was staying with the Philistines, but he would go to Batavia and, and kill all the people, the men, the women, the children, get the, get the gold, the sheep, come on, the, the linen, the silk. Then the next day he would go to uh, uh, Medina, he would go to Albion, and he would tell the king Aquish of the Philistines that he was going to kill the Israelites. But really he was in the camp, but he was killing them. So even though Saul was trying to kill David, David remained faithful to God. How is it when people try to kill us or hurt our feelings, we turn away from God? David still remained faithful to God. So here it was. They're getting ready to fight the Israelites are getting ready to fight Saul. So David lined up, him and his men lined up in the back. So the five lords of the Philistines said, wait, wait, is, is, ain't that David? Aren't those the Hebrews? Isn't that the one they said Saul killed thousands and David killed ten thousands? So the king said, well, yeah, David's with us now. They said, no, uh-uh, no, we don't want David nowhere around us because when the war starts, he's going to turn on us. They said, no, get David out of here. So, so the king went to David. He said, look, David, me and you are right. He said, but um, they don't want you here. You're going to have to go back home. So when David got back to Ziklag, watch this. Ziklag was burnt for, with fire. All David's, his wives were gone. His kids were gone. All the gold and cattle and jewelry and sheep and everything they stole, everything was gone. And the Bible said that they, that they cried until they couldn't cry no more. Have you ever cried? Come on. Have you ever cried until you couldn't cry no more? The men spoke of stoning David. Now these were outcasts. They'd been with David all this time, conquering everybody. 
Now they wanted to kill David. See, Ziklag is a place of, of, of loneliness. It's a place of depression. It's a place where your dreams die. When sometimes your kids get away from you. Ziklag is when you can't see your way out. Anybody ever been in Ziklag? Come on. Ziklag is when somebody died that, that, that you never thought would leave you or somebody left you that you wouldn't think would leave you. And watch this. When you're in Ziklag, you're always alone. When things are going well, you have friends and prayer partners and people coming over for barbecues. But when you're in a Ziklag place, it seems like you all alone. Come on, somebody talk to me. See, God designed Ziklag so that you can pay attention to him. So watch this. They all turned on David. They talked about stoning David. Now, David was bad, but you got 400, 400 other bad men. So David called for Abathar, the priest. See, Abathar had the urim and the thurm. He would put it on, and, and, and they had stones, and that's how he talked to God. So David said, shall I pursue? He said, you shall pursue, overtake, and recover all. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. See, as we look at our society now, I mean, we've been praying for Israel and, and Hamas and the terrorism, but I submit to you that we have terrorism right here in Rochester. Come on. We got terrorists right here. Terrorism is unlawful use of violence against civilians for political gain. These gang members and, and people are taking over our streets. I know this church, prominent church in the city, people with kids can't even go to church anymore because they're stealing their cars. We have, this is one of the most popular sex trafficking places there is. So our streets, Rochester, in some points, it's like Ziglag. But watch this. David didn't stay there. See, he got the word from the Lord, and what did he do? He got up. And then they saw the slave boy, and he told him, he said, what, where, where are you coming from? And he said, um, I was with, I was with, um, I was with the Malachites, and, and they, uh, they, they left me. He said, we burnt this place. Ziglag down to the ground. David said, well, take me. He said, promise me you won't do nothing to me. He said, all right. So when he got there, they was dancing and partying and doing electric slide. and They was having a ball. They had a feast. They got all this stuff they took from David. See, that's how the enemy is with us. When he gets you in Ziglag, he thinks he got you because once he pushes that button, now you're going to go back to depression. Come on. Once he pushes that button, now you're going to go back to fear. Once he pushes that button, now you're going to go back to backsliding and, and arguing and fussing and fighting and giving up on God. So here it is. The enemy's celebrating. The Bible said David attacked him from morning till night. Think about that. From morning till Till night, I think 400 of them got away. I believe he let them go just so they could tell everybody else what David did. He recovered all. So now on the way back, 200 people couldn't go. They were the, the intercessors. That's like when we go out in the street. Some people can't go. They stay here and pray or they ride around in their cars. But the men didn't learn their lesson. They was like, David said, okay, we're going to share with them. And the men was like, we're not giving them nothing. <laughs> they didn't come with us. And David called them wicked and worthless. Amen. See, we all in this thing together. David was telling them, look, just because they didn't go, they're praying for us. And it's the same with us. We got to come together if we're going to recover it all. My gifts and talents may be different from yours, but you're just as important. 
The person who cleans the church is just as important as me bringing this word. The person at the door is the first person we see. We have to see ourselves as God sees us. Watch this. Ziklag was David's last battle before he went into his kingship. Right? Read your Bible. He sent, he, sent, uh, he sent some of the bounty to the elders, and next thing you know, they made him king of Judah. Then later on, king of Israel. So a lot of times, Ziklag is your last battle before you step into your kingdom purpose. Oh, come on, y'all not with me. If you could just get out of Ziklag, if you could get out of fear, if you could get out of sickness, if you could get out of debt, if you could get out of backbiting, if you could get out of unforgiveness, Ziklag will not hold us today. Hallelujah. We are breaking out of Ziklag today. Watch this. David went on to, to be the king. But I submit to you, see, David wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost like we are. The Holy Ghost would come upon him. It would come upon the prophet, the priest, and the king. But the Holy Ghost is in us. Jesus told him, John the Baptist, there's none greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Why? Because we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Think about that. Elijah, Elisha, Moses, Isaiah, David, they weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. The prophets raised the dead. Elisha, bones were so anointed, the bones, they put the bones on the casket and somebody raised out the dead. But he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost like you. Amen. Watch this. We're going to talk about Paul. Paul said, can you put that back on the screen? Um, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty-five. 25. Can you put that back up there? Char, can you read that for us? Praise God. Help me out. Amen. Isn't she lovely? Three, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. Go ahead. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. Amen, that's good. Look what Paul went through. Now let me back up and tell you about Paul. Paul was a terrorist, for real. He was Saul first, remember? When Stephen, when they stoned Stephen, Saul was holding their clothes. The Bible said that he went to the, uh, the Sanhedrin to get letters with permission to drag the saints out of their houses and kill them and put them in prison. So it wasn't enough if he seen them walking down Norton. He wanted to be able to go to their house and drag them out. So Saul was a terrorist. He was a bad... See, when I'm in battle, I want somebody with me that been through something. Come on. Somebody that lost something before. I don't want somebody that said they've been in church all their life. Stop test the lion. We all been somewhere. We all did something wrong. I want a warrior with me. I want somebody that's going to be with me like Paul. Shipwrecked. Left for dead. The Bible said that they stoned Paul, left him for dead. That's when he went up into the third heaven. They prayed for him. He got up, brushed his teeth, washed his face, dusted off his sandals, and started preaching the word again. Come on. And we quitting because people talked about us? 
People leaving churches because they're offended. These people were getting beat. They beat Peter, and then one time, they let him out of prison, they beat him, and they said, look, we command you uh, not to speak in his name. Peter said, look, I don't even know if it's right if I keep listening to this garbage or not. He said, but I am going to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. See, it's coming now. Time is winding up. It's coming now where some of us are going to go to prison for the word. I talked to somebody in Canada, and I, I asked her, apostle, I said, um, can you preach against homosexuality? She said, well, no, you can see it. I said, can you preach against homosexuality? She said, no, they'll put you in prison right now. She told me that last week. So here it is, Paul. He was Saul. He got changed to Paul. God knocked him off his high horse. So when he first went to, I believe it was um, Ananias' house, the Lord told him to uh, minister to Saul. I think it was an angel. He said, look, I don't know what you're talking about. That's Saul. I'm I'm not messing with Saul. Do you know who he is? He was blind and he was still scared of him. Right? He prayed. The scales came off his eyes. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. He immediately started preaching the word of God. See, the kingdom of God is inside of us. The kingdom. Come on. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead resides in you. So when Paul started preaching, they were scared of him. They had to tell him, look, Paul's all right now. Paul immediately started healing the sick, preaching the word of God. Paul even rebuked Peter, the leader of the church. They went to eat, and Peter Peter was the one that brought the gospel to the Gentiles. So Peter was acting funny, Peter and James. They were the leader of the church. Paul said, wait a minute. He said, among the, 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 the Jews, you act like a Jew, but the Gentiles, you act like a Gentile. Peter rebuked them to his face. I mean, Paul. Paul didn't let nothing shake him. In Philippians, he said, look, I know how to be a base that's down and a bound up. He said, in all these things, I learned how to be what? Content. We have to get to the point where we're content because we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. We know that the Holy Ghost is inside of us. We carry the kingdom of God. So we have to be content. We can't be in zigzag one minute, out of zigzag the next minute. In zigzag one minute, come to church, worship, get a word. Next thing you know, you're back in zigzag by Tuesday. We have to go forward with the power of God. As we look, I'm going to back up to Ziglag. The Lord gave me a revelation. When they were in Ziglag, I didn't read about anybody trying to escape, Mike. Nobody ran away. Nobody tried to run. See, what happens is sometimes we get comfortable in captivity. Ooh, I'm going to say it again. Sometimes we get comfortable in captivity. We accept the sickness. We accept the depression. We accept being a second-class citizen. Well, I'm black. That, that's just how they treat us. And that, No! Well, I don't have that much money, and that's a No! Well, well I, I, I'm, I'm sick. No. You're healed. You're delivered. You're set free. You're prosperous. You carry the kingdom of God. You can't be comfortable in Ziglag. Why are we doing this? If you're going to be comfortable being defeated. Little kids, 10 years old, that's just how he is. Just just leave him alone. He's a terrorist. Drive that spirit out. (laughs) Come on. Little kids be running the house. 
I deal with high school kids, and sometimes the parents tell me what they're doing. I said, put them on the phone. But he sleep. I said, tell them it's Mr. Bill. And I just chart, what's wrong with you, boy? Don't you do that. They listen to me more than the parents. We have to take our authority over all forms of terrorism. I don't know why I'm on this today. No matter who it's coming from. Don't you be scared of no devil, no demon, no kid, no gang member, no bill, no sickness, whatever the doctor said. You have authority. You have authority. God said it's time to recover all. Nothing lacking. Watch this. Here's Paul. It got to the point where everywhere we, he went, there was prophesying that he was going to be bound. Agabus had four daughters who prophesied. And then, no, Philip, let me slow down. Philip had four daughters who prophesied. Agabus the prophet came. And he said, whoever belt, he put the belt around his hands. Whoever belt this is, they're going bound to Jerusalem. Imagine this. Everywhere you go to church, someone say, you, you going to jail. Go to another revival. You going to jail. Oh, he don't know what he's talking about. I'm going to this other church. You going to jail. Imagine if that happened. Please, y'all be signing statements, talking to the, <laughs> talking to the police. I know where Peter and them at. Y'all be telling everything. Making plea bargains. Come on. Paul said, why are you breaking my heart with this? He said, none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear. That's when you're walking in the kingdom. He said, none of these things move me. Death isn't going to move me. Sickness won't move me. My bills won't move, my kids won't move, my job won't move me. Come on. He said, nor do I count my life dear. Paul's mission was to carry out his kingdom purpose. God is bringing us out of Ziglag to carry out your kingdom purpose. Come on, saints. God ain't saying nothing. We have a kingdom purpose to carry out. God didn't save you just for fire insurance. But what happens is we come to church and we get comfortable and we sit down. Anytime something happens, I got friends who are not saved. They're still my friends. I'm working on them leaving them in the hands of the Lord, but I'm not going to act funny. I knew them since I was five years old. That's what's wrong with some of y'all now. That's why they won't come to church. You acting like you better than them. If it had not been for God, where would you be? Come on. If it had not been for God, I might be in prison or in a crazy home somewhere or dead somewhere. I had guns pulled on me before. I told a dude one time, kill me, punk. I'm going to die with dignity. Then the next day when I wasn't high, <laughs> I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> this dude that just got out of prison, I could have lost my life running my mouth. Come on. But it's amazing how, Vic, we had more courage out there than we do in here. When we got the power of the Holy Ghost inside of us. So whenever something happened, my, my one friend, he was supposed to come today. He's like, man, what happened to your boy? If a pastor mess up, it's, it's my boy. I mean, I don't know that dude, man. Why, what, what y'all church doing? If something happened in this community, what's your church? Who's the pastor? Pastors get blamed for everything. The pastors can't do everything. They teaching us so we can go do. Oh, y'all missed that one. See, the five-fold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So we are, I'm supposed to equip you to go do ministry. 
You see people I don't, I'll never see in my life. You go to gyms, I don't go to. You work places, I don't go. So the pastor's job is to teach us, which he does. But now we got to do something with it. The Lord gave me a revelation, Bruce. The Bible says go and make disciples. So it's discipleship, right? Get discipleship. Ships move. Amen? You get disciple, you ship them out, and go out into the battle, into the, into the, into the sea. But what we see in the body of Christ, we see disciple, sit. Then you go back next Sunday, you get disciple, and then you sit again. My mom had, you to listen to this song, sitting at the dock of the bay, watching the tide go away. So now in the body of Christ, you got armed battleships sitting at the dock of the bay when the war is out in the sea. Oh, come on, saints. I'm preaching good now. The war is out in the sea. In the Navy, there's a term uh, might called ship stranding, meaning battleships that are, 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 are condemned to the, to the, uh, to the shore. But the battle is out in the sea. So we have to get up, get out, and go get somebody saved. Get somebody delivered. When the last time you prayed for somebody to get saved? Not at church. When was the last time you prayed with somebody to get filled with the Holy Spirit? When was the last time you laid hands on the sick and they recovered? Even on the phone. People call you on the phone, pray for them. That's why they called you. Not to join in. It's terrorists on the east side. Yeah, it's terrorists on the west side too. It's terrorists in Israel. It's terrorists in... No! We have to take our authority to get out and get reach somebody else. Get somebody else saved. How many people work at a job where everybody's on the street where everybody's saved? Amen. You can't make them go get saved, but at least talk to them about Jesus Christ. Out of the abundance of the heart, what the mouth speaks. See, if Jesus Christ is really in your heart like you praise God, you should be telling somebody about it. Come on. There's people that you can recover that I'll never see in my life. In this season, and Joali said, I will return to you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm have eaten away. So today, we're stepping out of Ziglag. Come on, saints. Whatever your Ziglag is, even if you brought it on yourself, we're stepping out of Ziglag today. We're going forward in the kingdom of God. We're going forward in the power of the Holy Ghost. We're going forward in the anointing of God. We're going to break every chain, break every chain, break every bondage, break every fear, break every stronghold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not sitting down no more. I'm not crying and complaining no more. Ziglag is in the rearview mirror. Quit, quit bringing it back up. Watch this. Paul was so committed, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Most of it, he was locked up. But he said, none of these things move me. When you get to the point where none of these things move you, you go to a new dimension. My wife and I went to a, 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 was a supernatural conference in Syracuse, and, and, and the, the apostle said, he said, God can give you a revelation to a new dimension, but if you don't have enough word in you, you can't stay there. I'm going to say it again. He can give you a revelation to a new dimension. God is unlocking revelation today. 
But if you don't have enough word in you, meaning you got to read your word for yourself. You got to feed your spirit, man, yourself. Pastor does a great job. God bless him. But I need to get more word than Wednesday and Sunday. We all carry something and we come together, we have an explosion. But see, church is supposed to be a pit stop. You ever watch? We used to watch racing. We didn't have cable and all 100 channels. We have four channels. Three if you had a good antenna, maybe four. Right? Come on now. Liz, you remember that? Amen. So we had to watch racing. I ain't watched racing ever since I got cable. Praise God. <laughs> but when you watch racing, they go on a pit stop. See, Ziglag is a, a pit, right? But they go on a pit stop. They're out the race for a minute. But they got a team around them. Zip, 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 zip. They're changing the wheel. Zip, zip, zip. They're wiping off the windshield. Get on some gas. Pat them on the head. Go back in the race. Come on. That's what church should be. We come here, get our face wiped off. Some people get their diaper changed. Come on. Get some gas. And get back in the race. The pit was never meant for you to just stay there. Church was never meant for us to just sit here and die. Oh, come on, saints. Church wasn't made for us to just sit here. Get a good word, good word, Pastor Phil, good word, Pastor Ruby, pray for me, and then die the rest of the week. We're supposed to take what we learn and advance the kingdom. After Ziglag, David walked into his kingship. Paul seemed like he went through Ziglag all his life. But he said, none of these things move me. None of them. Even Jesus went through Ziglag. See, Jesus was tempted with everything we were tempted with. But he was without sin. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, here's Jesus with the big three. Peter, James, and John. Amen. The same three on the Mount of Transfiguration, they seen Jesus in a glorified body. They seen Moses. They seen Elijah. They heard God speak audibly. This is my beloved son. So they knew Jesus was sent from God. Here they are in the Garden of Gethsemane. They sleep. Jesus said, couldn't you just pray with me for one hour? Watch this. Jesus knew he had to be separated from the Father. He knew he had to take on all the sins of the world. It was bothering him. He knew he was going to be beaten. He knew everything he had to go through. The Bible said uh, his sweat became like blood. See, there's, there's a medical term, hematidrosis, where you can be so stressed out that your sweat can become blood. Hematidrosis. Here's Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, stressing over us. Watch this. He said, Father, can this cup pass from me? God didn't speak. He said, nevertheless, let not my will, let thy will be done. He asked him again and again. Jesus was going through. Sweat turning into blood. His friends sleep. Here he is. God didn't say nothing. A lot of times in Ziglag, you don't hear God. But you got your word. See, we got our word when we don't hear God. Jesus said, nevertheless, let not my will, let thy will be done. Then Jesus went to the cross. Watch this. The Bible said, for the joy 
that was set before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame. Thomas, you're that joy. Mike, you're that joy. You're that joy. You're that joy. You're that joy. All of our sins were before Jesus when he went to the cross. He took on all our sins. The Bible said, cursed is the tree. Jesus was that tree. Amen? That we don't have to live under sin, sickness, and death. We don't have to receive any generational curses. Stop saying that. If you feel like you got one somewhere down Uncle Willie back in 1900, break it. Amen? We're not under any curses. Cursed is he who hangs on the tree. Jesus took on every curse. He took on every sickness. He died for every sin, every murder, every rape, every lie. Come on. Jesus died for all of our sins so that we could be free. Jesus really took us out of zigzag on the cross. It's just for us to recognize what happened. Stay with me. I told you before, the word saved is soteria. It means saved, healed, delivered, rescued, prosperous, and set free. In the Greek, that's what it means. So Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary for us to have victory. And then he said, I'll send you another comforter. And he sent the Holy Ghost. So that same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. So Ziglag can't hold you. Come on. Debt can't hold you. Heartbreak can't hold you. Bitterness can't hold you. Unforgiveness can't hold you. Sickness can't hold you. Your past failures can't hold you. Your past failures can't hold you. Your past failures. See, what the enemy do here, he'll convince you to do something and then won't let you forget it. Nothing can hold you bound. Thank you, Bruce. It's broken today. Praise God. Praise God. Let us stand to our feet. Everybody lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for everyone here, oh God. Father, I, I bind Ziglag right now, Lord. I, I curse Ziglag in the name of Jesus. I render it powerless under the blood of Jesus. Lord, we lose healing, we lose deliverance, we lose prosperity, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Heal broken hearts, Lord God. Heal family relationships, oh God. Lord, we're letting our bitterness and unforgiveness go today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for stepping into prosperity, Lord, financial freedom, oh God. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord, that we are content, Lord God, that none of these things move us, nor do we count our life dear, Lord. But we are going forward in your power, in your anointing. Hallelujah, Lord. I claim breakthrough this day, Lord God. Breakthrough, Lord. Breakthrough. Breakthrough out of zigzag, Lord. Breakthrough out of fear. Breakthrough out of depression, Lord. Breakthrough out of sickness, Lord. Breakthrough out of lack, poverty, and debt, oh God. I thank you this day, Lord God, that we are set free by your power in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seats. Give God a praise, amen. Is there anyone here who does not know Jesus Christ or if you're in a backslidden condition? Today is your day. Amen. David had to call on Jesus to get out of Ziglag. He had to call for the priest to hear from God. The Bible says, when you hear my heart, harden not your, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If there's anyone here or anyone online, if you're online, call the church. If you're, not, if you're not sure of your salvation, I ask that you come down now, quickly. 
If you're in a backsitting condition where you've been saved but you, you kind of fell back, I ask that you come forward. God is not trying to embarrass you. But God wants you to be set free and walking in your kingdom purpose. If you're tired of the way things are going, tired of trying to work it out yourself, frustrated, come down. Receive Jesus Christ. Get in right relationship with him. If there's anyone here depressed, I ask you to come forward. If there's anyone here that's sick, I ask that you come forward. Praise God. Sorry. Praise God. Here's more. Praise God. Start with you, Greg. What you need to pray? Right here, Lord God. 